Hi guys, welcome to Chris Ryan Golf. Uh, we are once again at the Belfry at the PJ National Golf Academy in the Tartley's Fitting Suite. And I'm filming this video in January. Um, the conditions today are pretty breezy, quite a lot of wind out there. And if any of you are playing golf in England, then this is sort of the conditions that you deal with for a good you know, four or five months of the year. So we're gonna do a video today, a little bit on ball flight, a little bit on controlling the ball flight, and more specifically playing sort of into wind or maybe even crosswinds. If you're out there on the golf course and, and, you, and you face the shot into the wind, it's a probably a good idea to do two things. One is to try and send the ball out a little bit lower, and two is to try and reduce the spin on the golf ball. Those two things are gonna give you a little bit more control over that golf ball. Too much spin, too much height uh, are gonna kill you in the wind. Mo uh, sorry, a lot more difficult to control how far the ball travels through the air, uh, and the higher the spin rate, it's a lot more difficult to control the trajectory. So we're gonna go through about four points that you can do, um, set up and swing, which are gonna help you to control those two things, so control on the launch angle and control on the spin that's on the golf ball. Now I've got this, uh, I've got a six iron here. We're gonna talk about iron play. So this can be done with anything really, a wedge, nine, eight, seven, all the way through to six fives, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe a little bit different when you're getting into the higher clubs, three woods, drives, and that kind of thing, but we're looking at more iron play into the wind. So what do I tend to see lots of people do? Well, I tend to see people put the ball back and that's probably all they, they do based on the sort of information they've got. So lots of people tell me to put the ball back. My first question to that would be, why do you do that? And they kind of struggle there and don't really know why they've done that. They've just been told numerous times by friends and ready magazines that putting the ball back caused the ball to go lower. We're gonna make sure that we, we understand the points a little bit better. We're gonna make sure that we understand why we're doing that because I think if we understand why we do things, it's much easier to remember what to do. And it gives you a better idea of what you're trying to do in the goal swing if you kind of get the sort of reasoning behind what we do. So. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play that ball a little bit more back in my stance, so a little bit closer to the right foot for a right-handed golfer. How much you do this kind of really depends on how much you want to change that ball flight. I'm going to do this slightly for this, this demonstration, so you hopefully can see there that ball is certainly a little bit back of centre. Normally, if my six iron, I'd be having it just forward of centre, so that's certainly moved that ball a little bit more back. From there, I'm going to ensure, and this is point number two, that the handle stays in the same position. When I say the handle, I mean the sort of grip end of the club here. So, if I take a normal address, so you can see that ball's just forward of centre, I would want the, uh, the sort of butt of the club inside of my lead thigh. As I move that ball back in the stance, it's no good doing that if I move the handle back with it. So by playing the ball back here and keeping the handle over the inside of my lead thigh, I basically effectively reduce the loft on the golf club. Okay, the dynamic loft, which is the loft that we present to the ball, not the loft that's sort of built onto the club, is going to be reduced if we can have the handle forward. So I've taken my six iron here and I've reduced the loft significantly by moving the ball back and keeping the grip in the same position relative to my body. So that's the first two points, ball back, grip in the same location. Now, the third point is something to do with the sternum. So sternum is going to be uh, zip. I've got a zip on this, this top here. It could be buttons, whatever it may be, but something that's in the middle of your body. Very, very commonly, if the ball goes back in the stance, this can be with anything, a wedge, a chip, a bunker shot, whatever it may be. When the ball goes back, I tend to see the upper body go back with it. Okay, now we want the opposite really. I want to feel that if, as I move the ball back, my upper body moves slightly forward. So if I stand up this way, and put a little bit of tilt in there. If I move the club forward, you should see my sternum move slightly back and vice versa. If the club goes back, my sternum should move slightly forward. So to get that golf club behind that ball, I want you to almost feel that your upper body is moving fractionally towards the target. Not too much, but a little bit. So my sternum is definitely in front of that golf ball now. So this is going to ensure that we hit the ball much earlier in the arc, which is going to give us more of a descending blow. And again, it's going to give us more chance of presenting less loft to that golf ball. So what we should start to see there is the shoulders become a little bit more level. Um, and I, I might start to feel there's a little bit more weight on my lead leg, which is not a bad thing for this shot. So we've got three setup points there, which are really, really key. And we're going to go through one swing thought. Now, the one swing thought is, well, sort of two swing thoughts, I guess. Basically, it's going to be slightly make a, a slightly shorter swing and a slightly slower swing, but also trying to feel that the follow through is quite wide. Now, if we just talk about the speed of the swing first, spin that we impart on the golf ball, uh, there are loads and loads of things that go to create that spin, loads of different factors from the golf ball to the club, all that kind of stuff. Speed is one of those things. The harder we hit the golf ball, the more backspin we're going to impart. So, or the more spin, I should say. So the harder we swing, the more spin we put on it. If we're playing into the wind, the spin that we impart on the ball is really going to kill us. So if we can start to make a smoother, slower swing, we're going to impart less spin. That's going to give us more control. The follow through feeling is a feeling of nice and wide. And that's basically to try and stop us adding loft 
through impact, okay? Because we've set ourselves with a low olfactory club effectively at address, I want you to feel the following through is wide, and that's going to hopefully ensure that we present a better loft to the golf ball. Very, very often I see this, as I say, ball back, upper body back, and because the handle's so far forward, and we look as if we've got less loft, we then try and fight against that and, and overdo this. And what we're going to do if we do that is we're going to get quite a narrow arc on the follow through and we want the opposite we're going to get uh, quite a wide arc so four main points there ball back handle's going to stay in its same position which is going to be more forward relative to the ball we've got the sternum is going to go slightly towards the target which will set a little bit more weight on the lead leg and then we've got slight swing adjustment which is a slightly shorter swing a slightly smoother swing and a wider follow through let's have a go so ball a bit further back handle stays forward upper body a little bit more forward and I'm going to make a slightly smoother swing with a wider follow through. Okay, so obviously from the camera you can't see that ball flight, but that was significantly lower than my normal six iron flight. Uh, carried a little bit shorter, um, simply because I made a slightly slower swing, uh, changed the launch characteristics, all that kind of stuff. So it takes a bit of practice because the ball won't fly as far as it normally would. Um, if you can do it in practice with no wind, you'll get an idea of how far it's going to travel relative to your normal swing. You're then going to take that onto the course and then try and factor in the wind and all that kind of stuff. It's a difficult shot. You've got lots of things changing. You've got a setup change. Uh, the ball's going to carry a different distance. You've got the wind affecting it, all that kind of stuff. So practice it on the range first. Get comfortable with it. Take it to the golf course. Just one point to note, uh, and this may, be relevant, this may be sort of applicable to some of you, try and aim maybe slightly left of target. If we're moving that upper body forward and we're moving the ball back, we will hit that golf ball earlier in the arc. Now, if we hit the ball earlier in the arc, that gives a greater chance of the club path being out to the right of target. Okay? The fact that we're hitting it slightly earlier as well means that the club face is probably going to be a little bit more right of target. So there's a decent chance that these little punch shots will have significant, significantly more right to left, or they might be a little bit pushed out right. So, this is why you need to go to the range first. Take it to the range, experiment with it, see what happens. That shot I hit there certainly started a little bit right to target and flew pretty straight, so that was a little bit of a push shot. Nothing that I did wrong in my swing, it's just, you know, the, the, the way physics are, if I hit that ball slightly earlier in the arc, the chances are the club path's gonna be more right. I tend to find when I play knockdown shots, I tend to have a path which is more right. I don't really wanna start messing with the face on the golf course, so I will generally tend to aim my body a little bit more left to try and neutralise the path and get a little bit more closer to the target. So just one point to note, uh, but I say you'll figure it out if you go and practice, you'll start to see, you know, as long as you're picking your target and you've got your start lines, all that kind of stuff, you'll start to see what's happening. Um, so take it to the range, get comfortable with it, take it on the course, it is a useful shot. If you can get comfortable with this shot, it can save you a lot, a lot of shots on the golf course and help you get closer to those flags where the wind is, is quite high and strong. Thanks for watching the video, give it a thumbs up, uh, post your comments down below, I'll do my best to respond to as many as you can, and please subscribe to the channel, all these videos are free, and there's more going up every week, so we'll hopefully see you again soon.